sorry. Even the power valves, normally these are all ganked up. And um, yours is pretty clean. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know, I've seen video pictures, they're super dirty usually. Yeah. Pulling the rings off. Yeah, so what we can do now is check the ring gap and then it tells you if it's out of spec or in spec. And the maximum it should be is 0 0.06. Zero millimeters. Okay. And that's your. That's your. That's the max. Then you know. Okay, it's time to replace it. Once you put, you push it in the cylinder. Yeah. Then we'll use the piston. Push it down because you don't want to go on top here because the rings that never touches the top here. Mm -hmm. You just get that little gap there. Yeah, that's right. Around. So you don't want a five millimeter gap. Exactly. So you push it down a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit down. So that's 0 0.60. Let's go a little down. So, so far, you're still in spec? Because that's the maximum, yeah. That's the maximum it should be. If that fuel so, gauge, we're going to see what it is now. Yeah. And about there. What are we sitting at here? 0 0.50. So, that's what it felt like? Yeah. Still in spec? What is normally the smallest ones you would see on a used engine um, or used? Around about 4.5, Okay, so we're just in the so middle range right you, now. You're in the middle range, yeah. So, yeah, you probably could have got more out of the piston, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, good. So, let's have Aubrey repeat that. I did 239 hours. I could have done another 25 and not been a huge deal. Easy, easy. Another 50, it. maybe. Maybe even a 50, yeah, 100%. So, 240 hours and Aubrey just said it could have gone longer. Yeah. Right here is obviously, but he said, you know. It... Can I just tip that up? Yeah, you can pick it up. Yeah. Is your bike fuel injected? No. Yeah, it's a, it's a 2020, yeah. Nice. About that little jet, you know, the little. Oh the yeah. Jet, jet plug, then. Um... How's mine doing? Can you see through it? Yeah, no, it's clean. Oh, wait, wait, let's see. Oh yeah, it's clean. There you go, guys. Stay on top of that when you, you just Maintenance. take the little peat, just take the jet out and take the tube off and sure check those clean. every once in a while. So why does mine not clogged up? What maintenance practice did I do? Well, you're burning good, good two-stroke oil. Uh -huh. If you burn bad oil, low, low. What do you call it? Um, like low flash point, or yeah, it's just going to clog up with oil. It's going to clog up with oil, yeah. So mm -hmm. main, maintenance. This is all about maintenance. Yeah. Okay. So good oil maintenance, because that's the only thing you get a bit of clog up is obviously because this comes through the crankcase and obviously through yeah. And you can actually see it right through. Yeah, there. essentially, it's a crankcase breather, exactly so what you said. And then, and then so the, you, the residue can so go you, and clog you it. You get a bit of residue from the unburned fuel. A little bit of carbon could come off, mm -hmm. and, then and then clog it instantly. That's why you see if you check in your um, manual, owner's manual, you got to clean this. Okay, yeah. So Sometimes it's scary to look in the manual how much it tells you to do. Well, <laughs> Change this. I, sh I should have changed my uh, filters for the the fuel pump filter yeah, twice. Yeah. And <laughs> normally, this if your bike, um, if you keep the throttle constant mm -hmm. and it dips down and up and down like drastically. Normally it's clogged. Oh, okay. But because I'm clogged. using my rev range like more up and like it full, the, using the full rev range yeah. means that I ring it out every once in a while and clean rest it, it and I'm always semi trucking the two stroke, anyways. That's, That's what I get most of the time, guys. I'm in the low RPMs. <laughs> tried to be a hero and now I'm a zero. Oh. oh. The only time I actually really rev it is when you hit a flat area and you're just trying to catch up to your buddy or wheelie. <laughs> you stand up wheelies. <laughs> Sometimes I do like a drag race to see how fast it'll go. You know, use the app on you and yep. see yep. what your zero to 60 is. That's like the only time you rip it out with the sixth gear, top speed. I feel bad doing that though. 
Yeah, it's not good on a two-stroke. No, I'm so used to like the super bike world where you just you're always in the red line, but the dirt bike you try to I treat it like my diesel truck. And that's why we're putting the low compression head in. Like, every, you know, everyone gets the medium typically, but I'm like, I saw one guy who does reviews on tires on YouTube and he's an excellent trials rider. I can't remember his name. I think he works for like the Kenda or whatever, one of those tire brands. And he tried the low insert and he's like, this is the one to go with. Well, the low, low compression is always good for climbing stuff. Yeah, well, low I just get in traction. Exactly, low, no, you don't want high compression, you want low compression just Climbing wheels and that's it. Yeah. Well, that's why mostly when when I have problems, I don't want to break traction. Exactly. Yeah. You know. That's it. I don't so, need to ring it out in high end to no. really enjoy my day. To enjoy your day is to not ruin your day, <laughs> and that's what the low end will do, right? Like if I had this low compression, maybe I wouldn't have broken my finger. Exactly. <laughs> like literally, I I didn't have enough juice to get up and keep my balance. <laughs> Just doing a bit of inspection, make sure everything else is in spec here. Have you ever adjusted your power valve? No. no. Oh yes, okay, sorry. On the side, I've, yes, I have that. definitely adjusted the power valve. I run it, uh, you know, 2.5 millimeters from flush, or yep. when normally it's like way in. So I've, I've, I've turned it out three or four turns, you know, to, and it's, it runs way better once I did that. It, it actually gives you a mid-range and a low end. I'd have to look at my notes. Yeah, I, I, it was a certain, you know, I'd, certain, I'd measure it from flush, essentially, you know, how yes. much it's in or out. Because you lose track of how many turns you've done if you play with it a lot. <laughs> That's what I tell everybody. When you first get your KTM, make sure you measure it. Measure it Don't just you. count your turns. Because <laughs> then I would go back and forth, back and forth to try to feel the difference. And you don't know where you, you got to get a starting point. Yeah, but I didn't measure it right off the bat in, yes. in terms of with the micrometer. So basically, I'm just checking your height of your piston flap, uh, your um, power valve flap, because that's actually adjustable as well. Yeah. You got a stop on that side, a little stop there, so that will actually tell you how far to go down and stop. So that's even adjustable as well. Oh, okay. It, and then, when you get into it, like yeah, this. when you do your adjustment, you're adjusting on the side of the clutch cover, and then that causes obviously this to go. It's just this cam gear moving up and down. That's it. That's, That's all. it. Yeah. So you can actually do an adjustment here. So we like to leave it stock. You mean this bolt right here? Yeah. That's it. That's why it's got that oh, yeah. from the factory. So you, yeah. they don't really want you to adjust that. Yeah. Well, they didn't want you to adjust that either. Exactly. Yeah. But, but also, obviously they were making their emissions. Exactly. That's what we all assumed. It's, it's got to pass it. Yeah. So. So basically we're just checking. It should be normally about 49 moles on that. Good. All I know is the bike was absolutely terrible to learn a two-stroke after a four-stroke the way it came. You know, it was literally like, uh, and then it hit. But once I opened up the power valve two turns, and now it's just, it gives you a mid-range. It's as if the mid, it was on or off before. Yeah. And then once you do that, it becomes an it's actual linear. Smoother. Yeah. I find it amazing that some people ride around and haven't adjusted it, and then I'm like, you don't even know. Yeah. Maybe the 2022s aren't as bad, but the 2020 uh, for sure. They're still, they're still a little bad. We're yeah. Still getting a bit of, Too much on and off. Yeah. It's really hard to ride a two-stroke that way. That's like old school. Yeah, exactly. And most people don't realize the new two-strokes are like so smooth. They don't even realize. Like they think you got to ring them out. I'm like, no, no. no. no, no it's a tractor. Things. Cool. That's it. We'll, uh, keep it a good clean. Yeah, so you got two ports. You got your main main exhaust port here. Yeah, and, and it got, looks. I mean, it's two, super clean, like you it's said. It's super clean, and then you got two little ports on the side. So as soon as it opens up, you got your center port going open, and you got another two ports on the side opening. Mm -hmm. and that's where all your power comes in there. Well, essentially, to to take it apart and clean it just a little in terms of it's a little dirty. Um, 
you know, how much more time are we talking to do that? Well, you're probably looking at another hour to take all that out, clean it, mm -hmm. reseal it, put it back. Yeah, then I would say probably, well, I'd go by your opinion. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, well, personally, um, I normally like to take it out, clean it, inspect mm -hmm. it, and clean it, put it back, and you know it's, it's all clean and good and nothing else is damaged in there. Well, if you have the time and you recommend yeah. it, then we can I, do it. I'd rather check it out. Yeah, even though this one's looking a lot better than most. Yes. Exactly, yeah, I get a lot that's all just clean. But again, up. we're already here. So yeah, I would do it. It's all about having a good time on the trail later. That's it, get it all cleaned up. Okay, so we're attacking the cylinder head now, cleaning out, give us some details here, Aubrey. Yeah, cleaning out all the power valves. Got a couple of O-rings inside there that we wanna have a look at. And uh, mostly just carbon build up. You wanna clean it out so the flap moves freely. No resistance. Wow, look at that. And we'll clean all of this. What you get is you get a lot of a lot of carbon buildup here and inside this flap here. Yeah. That causes it not to fully open. So the carbon stops it from fully opening. Yeah. Gotcha. It can block but yours it up. is yours is pretty clean. Fully these little O-rings, that's where you get a little bypass and you get a bit of oil in your side here, but gotcha. That's it. And we'll make sure we got some new O-rings for this. Good yeah, before yeah, you lose them, <laughs> take them out. So typically when you have a, a job where somebody's doing a refresh on the KTM, yep. on their TPI, or non-TPI, is the same power valve design? Same, same power valve design, works the same. Yeah. Do, um, does Jody normally ask them if they want this service as well, or is this kind of usually bypassed on most refreshes? Um, well, yeah, a lot of guys bypass it. Yeah, and unless, you, unless they're there to talk yeah, to you about it. Exactly, yeah. And if you, obviously it's the, the mechanic's discretion as well. Obviously, if he strips it, it sees it's all tight and it needs a bit of clean. Just got to strip it down. But yeah. we got to phone the customer yeah. and uh, quote him a little bit more because normally they just, you don't do that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Because nobody wants to be surprised on their bill, right? Exactly. That's 101 we all deal with in the life of the shop life. Yep. You got you to gotta make sure the client's happy. Yeah, give them a heads up. There's always decisions, you know, whether you're cleaning an old carburetor and the carburetor is so messed up when you could just go buy a new one. Buy a new one. You know, instead of replacing everything and, and then also having to do custom work to make it work. So I've come across that situation. It's like, man, I could have just bought a new used one for instead of one less of than the, the labor of five hours labor. of labor. <laughs> <laughs> Are all these bolts originally blue Loctited? Yeah, it's blue Loctited. Yeah. That's those little ports I was telling you about. And they always always gunk up on the inside as well. But yeah, they look pretty good. This one doesn't look too bad then, from nope. what you're saying. Nope, that's, that's good. I wish I could have to know, was like, is this all from the two-stroke oil or is it also being cleaned by when I'm using the power foam? Could you know, be the every... power foam as well. Um, I used the... I done the power foam maybe three or four times throughout the, the hours. And of course, okay. I just did the power foam you know, and then yes. rode around for 15 minutes since so, then. Yeah, but also the type of two-stroke oil you're using. Yeah, the power foam can only clean so much because you're not exactly. power washing. Exactly. It's only just running through the cylinder as the muffler. Yeah, this is definitely the most complicated part <laughs> in terms of you got to remember where the pieces go. And that's it. And this will pop out. It's always in there a little tight. Mm -hmm. Just kind of pops out. Yeah. And that's your bell valve. So oh, yeah. not, not that bad. Not too bad. Nothing getting debris locked or anything, nope. but 
and that's where they normally clog up here, yeah, clog up on the sides here, yeah, and that causes it from not opening fully or shutting down fully, you know, closing down. Yeah. Cool. Could put it a little bit on the power. Oh, on that side wheel. is more, yeah. 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 And see, as soon as it gets gunk up, and it's a, it's a it's a very tight fit. There's not a lot of lot of give, you know. So if it just gunks up a little bit, that's why you, you know, want to check it. That's why you want to check it. Then obviously yeah. there a little bit there. That side. See that side there. Oh wow! And that's why it's very important to try to keep it clean in the first place as well. Exactly. And if we lift this, it will obviously continue to build because you continue, and then you'll have problems. And we got to strip all of this again. Yeah, because even the Amsoil or the cleaner is just not able it's to not get it get all in. out. Nope. Because this is behind the old power valve, you know, so you know. So gonna, by spraying it down the cylinder, it while it's running, it's just not getting. It's not going to get on the sides. No, pull the power valve. There pull you it, go. Clean it. We're learning a lot here on this video. How's the tire sales going? See on uh, yeah, I sold a set of tires. Yeah, yeah. I always, I don't know if you saw. There's always a bunch of complainers on the Okanagan Sport yes. Bike Group. With anything, you're gonna get that. Oh man, I, like some people are like, you should give those Hindle pipes away for free because they were your sponsor. And I'm yeah. like, man, I, it's like, yeah, racing's free. That's right. Some comments on this, classic. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, that's why Facebook's so lame. I try to get off. The only reason I rejoined Facebook was to sell stuff. Yeah, marketplace. That's the only thing that's useful for. And once I'm done with marketplace, I can just get off again. Get away from the tyranny. <laughs> all right, now cleaning off all the solvent. Yeah, so a lot of guys doing refreshes that you just never clean their cylinder like this. It's just kind of change the piston, pop it back in. Power valve. What a difference. Yeah. You don't want to place too hard. Yeah, you don't want to scar it up. Nope. Oh, that stuff's really stuck on there. Yep. Not just for the video, but you gotta. That's the way we clean it, here. You gotta, you gotta clean it good and do it the right way. See how smooth that is. Just falls in place. Oh, that's right. It's gotta. Yeah, it's gotta go. Over get over there. to the adjuster part. Yeah. And you got it. And that's it. You wanna go up and down. Get it center. A little side to side, and then get it centered, and then feel up and down if you feel a little notch. You'll actually feel a little click. New OEM piston. See those little pins there? Eh? Yeah. And that's when you assemble it. If you do it there, it's not going to fit. So you got to get it. So that's basically 0.3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's nice and tight. Pretty well, this tight. is where some people say wear eye protection for that. <laughs> they they pretty they can, tight. They could shoot at you. Then we're going to have to use a second-hand one. Yeah. 
and then slowly go down. And you lock him in position. The top one first. Yep. You've got to be gentle with him. Make sure that one lines up as well. Put one in there. All right, so you got uh, new copper washers. Yep, new copper washers. Uh, old ones there, yeah. Old ones. Prepped up. And then we're gonna do the low compression head, which is the 12 liter versus the 12.7. So this is the, the insert we're using. Do you hear that? All right, let's get out of here, guys. It's not the place to be. Look at the light. Here we go. Coming closer. Though, huh? Oh, I think he's still following me. 